So we start over again? <laughs> we're good, but we're going to go back. I want to know your beginnings, just so for everybody who doesn't know you, you celebrate okay. a huge milestone. Just tell them your name and what company you're with. Well, I'm with Bill Smith, and uh, we are with Legacy Agri Partners, and I'm a part of the Trical Superior Forage Group. and. So I've been working on this project for 40 years. That's amazing. You know, I will be honest, you might be the only person I know who has stuck with something that long. Uh, uh, my wife would probably uh, say, uh, yeah, she would agree with you, but uh, my wife and I would both, uh, that's a side line, you can edit it out, but is that uh, my wife basically did the same thing as she's uh, graduated from college with a master's in library science and was lucky enough to start out um, with a job offer to establish a brand new library in our home county. And so she left college on the 15th day of May and started as a director on the 15th of July and wound up uh, today that library is the fourth biggest in the state of Kentucky. That's amazing. She got a big anniversary coming uh, up next she, week. She, she finished up her 40th, she graduated, or she retired nine years ago, and so she's um, been retired nine years. They'll be celebrating her 50th year next year. She's already made videos for the library and all that. So both of us kind of was, uh, you know, you know, like to go out to try something new, you might say, and see if we make a legacy out of it, we, which we both have, so. That's amazing. Well, speaking of legacy, I want to go back to the beginning. How did you get your start in agriculture? Well, I grew up on a dairy farm, and uh, so definitely uh, it was. A, uh, I went to the University of Kentucky after that with an FFA, 4-H, and all those kind of things. I went to the UK and got my degree in ag economics. And after I left that, uh, I was uh, went to in the farm supply business and. Uh, basically took over as a manager and was there about four years, so tripled the sales by that time, decided it was time to move on again. So North of King had a um, opening, so I wound up being a sale, salesman for the eastern part of Kentucky. And the division sales manager called me probably in a year's time and said, uh, we're going to make a change in um, a district sales manager. Would you be willing to take it over? So I wound up taking over the entire state of Indiana and half of Kentucky with six salesmen. So I was uh, with that uh, group, North of King, for approximately four years. And uh, looked like there was some changes going to take place again. So I decided it was probably, well, I stayed with him, but anyhow, the sales manager that we had in the Northern Division had left, so he calls me in May, or, or well, to back this up, probably in March, and asked me, he says, I'm, I'm getting ready to work on a new crop. And I said, what kind of new crop are you going to work on? I'm going to work on a crop called triticale. And I said, what? Triticale, what in the heck is triticale? Well, it's a cross between durum wheat and rye. And I said, well, that's interesting. So he says, do you mind if I fly into Cincinnati and sit down and kind of talk to you what's going on? I said, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll at least listen to what you've got to say about it. And so anyhow, we did. And he was telling me, you know, that we were, it was Arco Seed Company. It was owned by Atlantic Richmond Oil Company. I thought, well, you know, there's plenty of money here. There's no <laughs> question about it if the oil company's going to buy it. So anyhow, uh, you know, I thought about it, and I thought, you know, this might be a good opportunity to see what I can do. I said, I always love challenges. And so I said, well, well, we'll take a chance at this. So so anyhow, it turned out that uh, I went with them, and there was uh, actually a salesman that was hired in Winnebago, Minnesota, uh, that, uh, and he and I both went to work about on the fourth day of May of uh, 84. And so, it turned out that uh, we were there with ARCO for approximately about oh, two to three years, as I said earlier. And uh, that was caused because the, um, actually the CEO was Robert Anderson, and he had stepped down from uh, ARCO. And uh, then it has uh, Ron Turchin, that was the first uh, owner of this project, said that the accountant wanted to, uh, became the CEO, and he said this is a good time to make a change, so they sold us off to Sun Seeds. 
Sun Seeds was, as I said earlier, was a was a garden seed uh, company and bought us, and uh, we were there for a few years, and then they went uh, bankrupt, and so that's where we kind of wound up. And I was really concerned that that would be the last I'd ever see of Triticale again, and. So Glenn Mull was our really our producer here in Can in Kansas, and so that gave us the opportunity to continue to market, uh, even with the courts allowed us to keep producing uh, Jenkins Triticale. So really, I can't remember back that far if we really got much done from a breeding program standpoint. Then we did have a very small breeding pro uh, program at, at the point, but. Um, Really, things didn't really start to happen until after the program was changed and was bought by, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> by Goldsmith, and uh, and that's when things really started to change. With Bob Matcha was a, a breeder uh, along with Holy Can too, and they had headed up the wheat program for North King, and that program had discontinued. So. They really made the major changes in Triticale by reducing the height of it, getting a better leaf on it, and uh, so the Triticale of the of the past and the Triticales of the 1990s changed dramatically. Where does it stand today? Totally different plant? Uh, it's, I, I think today we're even leafier than we were then. It used to be, uh, if you see rye, rye, you know, it has a very thin, uh, a lot of distance between inner nodes. Mm -hmm. Inner nodes have been reduced considerably width of the leaves, or some as wide as an inch. So I mean, that's it's called sort of the breeding program. Now with the new hybrid program, we got a lot more vigor. Uh, crops come out of the field, or comes out of the field, or comes out of the ground much quicker. That's incredible, Hover. Now being a sales guy myself. I have to ask, what was the reaction the first time you tried to sell it to a farmer and tried to tell him what it was called? Well, there's two things. One is uh, they, uh, some of them I had heard about Triticale because back in the 70s, there was a farm organization called the NFO, or National Farmers Organization. They had brought Triticale in from Europe and sold it in the Northeast at least and it turned out that uh, it was a spring type variety that was sold in the fall, so it all froze out. And so going out to the farm, uh, you're selling you're selling a triticale, and they said, triticale, we're not raising that stuff, it freezes out, there's no way it's winter hardy. <laughs> so anyhow, it, uh, I said, well, this variety is Jenkins, it's out of Canada, this will, this will work, but boy, it was a lot of reluctance to, for anybody to even try triticale for years, and you didn't sell much, and you just kept hitting your head against the wall. You know, when are we going to really make a breakthrough here? But that's that's kind of the way it was. It's, it was a lot of a lot of miles and and a lot of hard work, and mm -hmm. finally, it's like anything else. You finally had that early adopters of what you mm -hmm. tried, and once that started, then it grad to. As I say, I kind of wish I had said that earlier, but I kind of said it took a long time to form the snowball. Yeah. And now we're to the point where the snowball rolls down the hill and it's picking up a lot of snow. 